reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there are so many things to unpack in today's readings from the Word of God and also from the saints of the day. So I'm trying my best to put them all together into one. The beautiful thing about today's gospel teaching of Jesus is that he introduces us to a prayer relationship with God. Jesus is the face of the Heavenly Father and when his disciples are curious to know how to pray, he draws them into his own intimacy with the Father by teaching them this beautiful prayer. There are two important things that I'd like to draw from this prayer. The first thing is the intimacy with God that Jesus invites us to. That it's not so much about how many prayers we say, how long our prayers are, or saying the right mantras in order to control God. It is a filial relationship that Jesus draws us into as his disciples. That means it's a relationship of trust, of confidence that my God cares for even the trivial things that I forget to ask for. In fact, we cannot beat God when it comes to generosity. And if we are careful to notice about how our life pans out, there are many ways in which God has blessed us. And so we turn to Him always in gratitude and trust, even in difficult moments when we face challenges, setbacks, losses in our life. We are invited as disciples of Christ to trust that the Father is still a loving Father who cares for us and is going to make sure that we, we will sail through even the, the dark moments of our life. The second aspect of the prayer is how important Jesus makes forgiveness a part of the disciples' life. The first thing that we will realize when we turn to God in prayer is the people that we are not at peace with come uppermost in our minds. And sometimes when we are not in good relations with someone, it becomes almost impossible to pray. And that is the Holy Spirit reminding us that there is someone who needs our forgiveness or someone that we need to ask forgiveness of. But coming to the saints of today that I don't want to leave out, especially the two martyrs of England, when we kneel before God, we can stand before anyone. There need not be any fear. Sometimes our default mode in, for many of us is blind obedience to authority. But the disciple of Christ is not one who is a slave to blind obedience. In fact, the two saints of today, St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher, had to make a very difficult call to stand up to an authority figure. And who was the authority figure? It was King Henry VIII, the king who began the schism between the, the Catholic Church and the Anglican Communion. It is this king who, because of his desire to divorce his lawfully wedded wife and to marry another, decided to oppose the Pope who refused to give him a divorce. And he decided to set himself up as an authority above the bishops in England 
and to define the church in his own terms to suit himself. But the greatest obstacle he faced to get the support of everyone were those who had morally conscience, uh, had an objection based on moral conscience. And those two important people were John Fisher, who was the bishop, and St. Thomas More, who was a faithful chancellor to the king. Now, when these two men refused to sign the act of succession by which they agreed that the king was the lawful ruler over the church in England and that the, the bishops had to frame the laws in the church according to his whims and fancies, when they refused to sign the act of con con uh, succession, both these men were sent to their death without trial. When Thomas More was asked why he did it, it was because of his conscience. Before obedience to authority comes obedience to conscience. It is in conscience that God speaks to us in the depths of our hearts saying, this is wrong, this is wrong. And we need to pay attention to that voice rather than to an authority that gives us orders that are contrary to faith or contrary to what is morally right. And so the Christian is freed from blind obedience to authority. When there are le legitimate authorities, of course, we are called to obey them. When they uh, direct us according to the laws of the church, the laws of morality, we, and the laws of our community, then it is fine for us to obey them. But just because a person is in authority, th there are times when they abuse authority. They make use of their position to abuse or to, to take selfish interests. It is in those times that we are morally obliged to speak the truth to power. When we know that God is our Father, He is the ultimate authority, and every earthly authority is accountable to Him. And so if we believe this, then just like John Fisher and Thomas More, we will also be given the courage to speak up the truth when the truth is at stake. Let us pray for the courage of St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher in our own lives so that we may always obey God and not mere human beings. For this grace we pray in this Eucharist.